Voters in Wyoming head to the polls Tuesday for one of this cycle's most closely watched House primaries. Liz Cheney is fighting for her political life against a very MAGA challenger. The lie that the 2020 presidential election was stolen is insidious. It preys on those who love their country. It is a door Donald Trump opened to manipulate Americans to abandon their principles. This is Donald Trump's legacy, but it cannot be the future of our nation. Liz Cheney, she's made her time in Congress and this election all about her. Well, it's not about her, it's about you. Wyoming deserves a voice in Congress to fight for our values, our way of life. Now, a recent poll shows Cheney is far behind her challenger, Harriet Hageman. She would be the fourth House Republican who voted to impeach Trump to lose a primary if she loses. For others, they've announced their retirements. CNN's Isaac DeVere is joining the conversation. But Laura, I want to start with you. You're just back from Wyoming. Um, look, Cheney has made this entire campaign about Donald Trump. She's kind of made her entire existence at this point with the January 6th committee uh, about Donald Trump at this point. That's not a winning message in a state uh, that Trump is very popular. He won quite handily. What's your read on things having been on the ground? Yeah, I mean, uh, almost every single Republican that I spoke to was against Cheney. Uh, and the reason all across the board was because of her time on the January 6th committee and was because of what she's doing to, um, to essentially hold Trump accountable, but they don't see it that way. They see it as she's on a witch hunt. They see it as she's... Um, that the evidence that has been presented is not factual. Almost every single Republican that I spoke to also repeated lies about election fraud. And when you ask them, well, there were a number of audits held, and Wyoming, it's, what about Wyoming itself? They said, well, there was no fraud in Wyoming, and I don't believe the audits in the other states. Uh, there's no way Joe Biden could have won. So essentially, they disagree with everything that Cheney is doing. Now, what was also striking was that every single Democrat I encountered was switching uh, parties to vote for Cheney in in the primary, and their whole entire reasoning was also about her work on January sixth on the January sixth committee, and was uh, the fact that they feel as though she's standing up for the truth. Which is great, unless you're in a state where only fifteen percent of the population is registered Democrat, which creates a problem when you're in a Republican primary, even if they do yeah. switch. Isaac, I think one of the interesting questions is. Cheney knows all of this, right? Like, she's very aware of these dynamics. And so the biggest question over the course of the last several months or year has been, why? Why are you doing Like, what's, what's you going through? And I think there's a very clear rationale, and her father kind of repeated it too, they really do view the former president as an existential threat to the country. But there's also the potential for a 2024 run as well. Mark Leibovich uh, has a piece in The Atlantic right now talking about the potential of a Cheney primary. It would almost certainly be another losing primary for her, yet it would nonetheless be a fascinating matchup. It's hard to imagine DeSantis or Pence seriously mocking Trump for losing to Brandon, Joe Biden, in 2020, or challenging his election lies, or slamming him for his complicity and desertion on January 6th, or mentioning the FBI search into his residence, or his need to plead the fifth. Yeah, I mean, Cheney would do all of those things and would play a very prominent role in doing so. Is that the goal, the point, the end game now? I mean, I think the goal is to keep Donald Trump from being the president of the United States again. That seems to be what's driving her throughout. And so, look, she stands on that and her principle and what she's doing on the January 6th committee in her mind. Uh, and if that means losing her primary, she seems okay with that. Uh, I do think that there's another possibility to consider here when it comes to 2024, which is that she might not run in a Republican primary. She could decide to not go down that route again. Uh, and run as an independent. If she went, ran as a Republican, then certainly she would probably end up in the Republican debates and could force these issues there. But if she ran as an independent, uh, you know, there, and Donald Trump ends up being the nominee for the Republicans, you look at what happened in 2016 when Trump won with 46% of the vote. If instead of Jill Stein uh, <laughs> leeching votes from Democrats uh, and Gary Johnson leeching some votes from Democrats, what happened in 2016, she's leeching votes from Republicans, it might make it easier for a Democrat, whoever that Democrat might be, and it seems like Joe Biden is very intent that it's going to be him, uh, to make uh, an easier run for the White House. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's going to be fascinating to watch. Look, no matter what happens on Tuesday, Liz Cheney's not going anywhere. I think that's very, very true. Um, there is another primary on Tuesday I want to ask. Uh, Mario, I want to start with you. you know, Sarah Palin could uh, be headed to the House, depending on what happens, probably in a month or two, based on ranked choice voting uh, in Alaska. Um, one of the questions I've had, 
is she going to win, right? She has name recognition, she has celebrity, but this is a very real race with another Republican and Democrat ranked choice voting. What's your sense of the race right well, now? Well, ranked choice voting will be the wild card in that race in Alaska, right? But again, the name ID, the celebrity, et cetera, she's essentially the proto-Trump. Uh, as well. Those are all in her favor. The question is, if she wins, is Congress big enough for her and Marjorie Taylor Greene and that wing of the party as well? Yeah. No, I, that's actually what I was going to ask you. You were, you've lived on the Hill uh, in the Capitol building with me for many, many years. Um, we're not, we're not, we didn't live together, right? <laughs> um, but the idea, like celebrity freshman uh, yeah. is always a, a piece of fascination uh, at the start of every, any new Congress, but like I don't know that you know, if you're Sarah Palin, what it's like to be a backbench member right. of the House when you land there. What does a Congresswoman Palin look like? Well, what's also interesting is compare it with Don Young, the former congressman yep. from Alaska, who's sent millions and millions and millions of dollars back to Alaska. That is why he was in Congress, one of the most prolific fundraisers as far as Alaskans are concerned, appropriating a lot of money there. And Sarah Palin, does she have those policy chops? Does she have that influence among the the rest of members if she does win and able to, to send and to direct that money back to Alaska? And um, so we'll see. But Sarah Palin is known for... She'll probably get a lot of media attention at the beginning, but will she be an effective member of Congress should she win? Yeah, open question. Appropriations matters in Alaska, yes. as any of their senators uh, or former Don Young, uh, rest in peace, could tell you. We, we will have to wait and see. It's a very real race, by the way.